Hi, I'm Christine Murray, and I'm the producer, one of the producers of Feelings Are Facts, The Life of Yvonne Rayner. And I'm Jack Walsh, and I'm the writer, director, and also producer of Feelings Are Facts, The Life of Yvonne Rayner. And our film looks at the career of Yvonne Rayner, postmodern choreographer and filmmaker whose career spans five decades and has gone on to push the boundaries of each art form she's worked in. I don't want any more gifts, cards, phone calls, prizes, clothes, friends, letters, books, souvenirs, pets, magazines, land, machines, houses, entertainments, honors, good news, dinners, jewels, vacations, flowers, or telegrams. I just want money. So welcome to the Berlinale and the Teddy Awards, of course, too, the Queer Film Prize of this festival. Uh -huh. Um, my first question is when, how did you get to know Yvonne? Were you friends before or how did you establish that contact? I met Yvonne uh, when I took a job at the Collective for Living Cinema in Lower Manhattan in the late 80s. And I took the job as executive director and Yvonne was the president of the board of directors. And because of just that relationship, obviously you work very closely with the board president. and. Uh, It was, it was very endearing because when I met Yvonne, I didn't, I mean, I knew that she had a dance background, but I didn't know how important she was in dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were doing film screenings at the collective, there were nights when the board had to come in and actually help out. And, you know, there'd be Yvonne, you know, ripping tickets, coming in like, so like this superstar of like downtown culture is just doing these very pedestrian tasks, right? Mm -hmm. She would do in a dance almost. Um, <laughs> And then uh, in the late 90s, I was an executive producer in a public television station, mm -hmm. and uh, Brushnikov had already relaunched a lot of the Judson work. Mm -hmm. And they were coming through Berkeley, and I reached out to Yvonne at that point and said, oh, is anyone documenting this? Because I thought that I could move in and try to get the, the station mm -hmm. to at least do some documentation. But they were already doing work during that tour. Uh, so there wasn't an opportunity there. And then, um, I read her memoir, and I called her and said, oh, I read it, it was really wonderful, and this is in 2007. And I said, so who's making the documentary about it? And she kind of laughed and said, no one, no one is. And I said, well, I'm interested. And then she laughed some more mm -hmm. and said, uh, no, I don't think so. So then we went back and forth. <laughs> That was a pretty clear statement. Yeah, well, there's... She's very surprisingly modest. Yeah. And sort of, like, why would anybody want to do that? Yeah. And so then we started an email exchange, which was uh, very interesting. And it, it was, why would you do one about me? It should be about Judson. It should be, like, yeah. Trisha Brown should be in there, Kelly Schneeman should be in there, Steve Paxton. Yeah. So I wrote it back and said, well, hopefully they all will be in there, you know, if you agree to do this. Um, And she well, I'm not so sure. And then I actually, uh, Steve Reich was touring at that time, and he did uh, a piece for, um, uh, uh, the name eludes me right now, but he did this piece in San Francisco in the uh, Symphony Hall. And the audience was mostly people born, I'd say, after 1960, so they never would have seen him perform live. And he came on the stage and did this performance and people gave him a 15-minute standing ovation. I think because they were so hungry, they've heard so much about this piece, and to actually see it performed, it was like a gift to them. And so then I wrote back to Yvonne when she said, no, I don't think so. I said, well, look, I, I saw Trio A, which I hadn't seen, which I think is this virtu virtuoso piece. And I'm not a real dance person, I said, but I can see it for that. And I just saw, this right performance and people went wild. They said, there's a whole generation that's not going to know anything about this unless you and people of your generation really start documenting it. Mm -hmm. And so then she wrote back very simply and just said, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we were off. Yeah. Wow. So when did you begin shooting? Um, the first interview I did, because I was trying to raise some money for it just mm -hmm. with uh, a treatment and um, a budget and wasn't getting anywhere, so I re realized I had to shoot some footage. So in June of 2008, we did the first interview, and we, it was just my DP, uh, a sound person who we met in LA that we never worked with before, and I. 
and went to Yvonne and Martha's house and did about four hours of just straight interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like as a producer, how did you accompany the process or experience that entire yeah. journey? Well, I have a dance background, so I did not know Yvonne as a filmmaker at all. So Jack and I came at, at the subject from op, sort of opposite mm -hmm. art angles, which is kind of an interesting thing. It's generated a lot. I had no idea she had a film career at all. Mm -hmm. I only knew about her as a dancer. Mm -hmm. And so at some point along the way, I decided to learn Trio A because I felt like to understand her mind, that work is such, a, it's such an embodiment of her kind of philosophy of of dance and dynamics and, and the sort of political relationship between a performer and an audience, mm -hmm. that watching it, and we were interviewing everyone talking about it, mm -hmm. that I felt like I, I couldn't really understand it fully unless I experienced it in my own body. And it was, that was one of, one of the best things that, that happened as part of the process for me was a very long, very intense experience. Jack documented the the group of, of women that I was with. We all we all learned it. We all came at it from different interests. Mm -hmm. One of the women that learned it was Yvonne's niece, who's mm -hmm. in our film, mm -hmm. um, and then I, and then two other people that were performance artists who were interested in learning the work because of its sort of theory that's mm -hmm. embodied in that work. So that was a really fun mm -hmm. So what, what, um, what Yvonne Reiner did you want to show? You know, like in a documentary film, you, you, I mean, nev you're never able to, you know, depict the entire personality of the entire person. Right. What, was, what were the facets you were interested in? I think for me was to try to remain as authentic to what her messages were and the various aspects of her career. So wanting to very much capture uh, when she first showed up in New York, kind of what that learning process was mm -hmm. for her, how she and the other artists at, at Judson came to do the work they did and to try to represent that as honestly as possible, even though the only documentation is through photographs, so there's no, there's very, very little cinema that was shot of them. Mm -hmm. And then um, to really try to, I think for me the hardest section was the film section because the films are so complex. Mm -hmm. And being not being able to unpack them all, but to try and figure out what are the what are the key elements in each of these films mm -hmm. that really need to be brought to light. So, the important thing in the beginning of that for the first two films was to have people understand what she was trying to do in grappling with character and narrative mm -hmm. versus all the stylistic things she was doing. Mm -hmm. um, as it moved along, it was more moving on what were the themes that she was more involved with, uh, and then coming back to dance. It, we just had such access to these new performances that it was like really, oh, we get to actually make a performance movie now. And so that was really exciting and dynamic and everyone was incredibly generous and sweet to us in giving us access to these performance spaces. And uh, we had crews who worked with us that were just amazing. And totally, many of them never knew who Yvonne was, but I, after being with her for just a few hours in any situation, they all kind of fell in love with her. So mm -hmm. everyone wanted to come work with us again. So it, was, it, it worked really well. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you haven't heard any uh, um, reactions from the, from the audience yet, I guess, because it hasn't been premiered. Well, well, we, we, we did. Yeah, we, had a couple of, so we had a couple of screenings. Work in work progress, progress screenings. screenings. Yeah. And so we did get some feedback from those. Which, uh, which actually had us alter the film, uh, the beginning of the film, quite radically. Mm -hmm. So we, we made a complete change. But yeah, for the most part, a lot of the the body of the film, we did that screening to figure out what was working, what wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it allowed us to take out what wasn't working, so we shortened the film by about three or four minutes. Mm -hmm. And then to put in more of what people wanted, which was more dance footage. Mm -hmm. So it's always difficult to be an artist. <laughs> now it doesn't matter what time you live in, it's always a challenge. I think the times we're in, we're in right now, it's, it's extremely difficult to be an artist. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very challenging um, to survive financially and um, to just, you know, keep continue to realize your projects and ideas, what can she kind of like give to younger generations maybe? Um, because she's been so involved with dance and very physical, practical work, but she's also, well, she doesn't call herself an, a, a person or like a theoretician, I think she says that there's a... a, 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 a yes. yes, she's not a theorist, but she's been dealing, she's, she has a curiosity for it, let's mm -hmm. put it that way, yeah. and she's been dealing a lot with theories uh, in general, a critical theory. 
Um, so she has she she embodies wisdom by now. Oh yeah. Say, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what can and, and and someone who has that is supposed to, and I think she wants that too. Give it, but you can see it in the end of the film. She wants to give it back. Yeah. To maybe younger generations or to the public, to the people. What what can she give? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What well, she have? you know, it's a great question because we, at, when we started interviewing her, she was still teaching at Irvine. Yes, yes. And uh, there were a number of times when I asked her, well, what, what about your students? Why are you teaching? Uh, what's it like for them? Because the, they're very talented people coming out of these uh, schools at Irvine, especially. And then she was also, before that, the Whitney program. Uh, they're coming out with a certain amount of debt that don't have the opportunities, obviously, because New York's really expensive for young artists to go to, um, LA, the same thing mm -hmm. anymore. And um, she was always quite, I think, struck by their, pers their own perseverance, even as they were emerging, to really find their own way. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she had mentioned a number of very, very talented artists that she had worked with mm -hmm. in those programs who struggled a lot. And you know, she, she's the first to acknowledge that she came to New York in a very privileged moment mm. in that it was affordable mm. in, in Manhattan, in um, Tribeca where she settled for 40 years. People didn't want to live there. I mean, we had photos that we took out of the film. That uh, didn't want to live there. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, people, it was yeah. like, it was manufactured. Yeah. So it's like, and these photos that are there, some of them actually look like Berlin after the war. I mean, like the bombed out buildings and sidewalks all broken up. Now, of course, it's completely gentrified. That's Beyonce's place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And you know, the sad thing too, Yvonne, after 40 years in a loft got evicted, yes. you know. Uh, so I think that she's, I think, very aware that her, she and her generation were very privileged in coming there and having the freedom really to be able to work on their work all the time. I mean, in, the, in the, the film, it's very interesting to hear Steve Paxton say, like, he even gives the sense of what he paid for, like $20.84 yeah, a month yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for this yeah. place. But he goes on to say that apartment allowed him to become an artist because it meant yes. he didn't have to, he, he could get a little job. Simone Forti says the same thing. You, didn't need, you don't need a lot of money, mm -hmm. you just need some money you know, which you could get any, at any job, mm -hmm. and then you got to spend so much time on your art. Mm -hmm. um, now I think for younger artists, it's catch as is catch can, or they're very privileged class kids. And I think that that's, uh, that's kind of one of the sad things that we start seeing happening, in the States especially, mm -hmm. is that um, even a generation ago, where artists of different classes had opportunity that's pretty non-existent now. I think if you don't have some family support, uh, I mean, I mean financial support, uh, you you have a very very hard time. Yeah, there's no nineteen dollar apartments a month anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think also one of the things about her story is that she came to being an artist later than some people do, you know, and that her career really, she was not afraid to evolve. She's pretty fearless about evolving, mm -hmm. trying new things. You know, she made this advancement into film when her work got very personal and political in a way that she felt like she couldn't really express her into more intellectual ideas and the, the things that she was struggling with as an artist through that medium. And so she just switched mediums. She just found a medium that allowed her to, to follow that line of inquiry for a while. And when that became problematic after 25 years and funding so suddenly was really drying up, she was not afraid then to say, I'm going to do this other thing now. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make a little bit of a left turn and I'm going to pursue this because I'm going to continue to be an artist. I'm going to continue to really feed this hunger and passion I have. Yeah. Evolving that's a good keyword because she's also she had had a pretty late um, coming out in a way. She was mm -hmm. coming out as a lesbian in her 30s or 40s? 50s. 50s. No. Yeah, yeah, mid 50s. Oh, impressed. Okay, yeah. 50s. Wow. Um, yeah. Um how did that happen? How did she, she fell in love. realize it? <laughs> it was just, it was that she fell in love. Well, I think that had been evolving for her over time. I think that, um, you, you know, Yvonne in many ways doesn't want to talk about those deeper personal things. You know, she'll, she'll, she's happy to talk about her relationship with Martha and how they came to being, but when 
I mean, she tells a story that's not in the film. Of she had this uh, lesbian encounter when she went to college at Berkeley. And I think it kind of, uh, or close to lesbian encounter, I think that it was like, oh, Attention. like later in life she, can, she could say, oh, I was probably a lesbian then, I just didn't realize it. And then had this path of having relationships with men that, as it's told in the film, were you know, not very successful. Um, so I think that um, many years having, and also having a lot of lesbian friends during that time, and you know, Yvonne's someone who's going to go into deep thought about these things, and as Sue Friedrich says, you know, comes out writing a manifesto versus just coming out, mm -hmm. you know, so I think that it took, I think she probably sat with that a long time before she acted on it, and I think many people believed or thought that she had had a crush on Martha for quite some time. I think, and vice versa, uh, and so it kind of just ha it just happened at one point, and then the rest is history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are her plans for the future? What is what is she involved in? What's what's her? She's still vision? making. She's making new work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a new piece that just premiered at the Getty in October. Mm -hmm. uh, what about us? I believe that's the name of it, and that's actually having its New York premiere in April or May. So that's kind of been the focus of her work. But she keeps churning them out. I mean, she's doing pretty much a work every year to 18 months. You know, a large, you know, scale work with all the dancers. And, and you know, of course, there's a complication, almost like the Grand Union days, that her dancers, you know, like Pat Hoffbauer that we were talking about before, have careers of their own. Yes. So like trying to get everybody together to do something is, you know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. So. It is so. But she's an amazing person. She's, 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 I think really that she <clears throat> has that power to inspire younger generations of artists because that's what we need right now, a lot of support mm -hmm. for, for the younger generation. And she's doing that. So oh, you great. brought a really important film to this festival. Oh, thank yeah. you. That was one of our goals, too, to inspire younger generations. Yes. So I'm glad that that no, came I think through. That, I think right now it's so crucial because oh, otherwise good. we're going to have an, an issue. There's no, or there's only privileged artists growing up into the next generation. Yeah. Where, trying to tell us what the world is about because that's not art, that's... I agree you know, with you. That she, one it's of the really, things that's really interesting really about her as a, as a, um, a, to look at her career is that she chose to remain in a certain outsider position. Mm -hmm. She did not, she did not form a dance company and go on world tours right. and, you know, become right. a kind of more uh, established, you know, name and, and, um, and a lot of older artists that you hear about are people who have achieved great economic success or, you know, are hugely famous. And well, for generation, I mean, there's so many, especially visual artists, who, you know, Rauschenberg, Pollock, <laughs> you know, I mean, these artists, you know, Louise Very Bourgeois, yeah, yeah, you know, they're just really incredible careers. Yeah, yeah. And even though she's on par with them in output, yeah. and it's, it's also the issue of, you know, dance, it's ephemeral. There's all the yeah. problems of yeah. perform, you know, performance yeah. in itself. Time-based, yeah. 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 But thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.